Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Equestriate War. I'm your host, Mr. Yaldum of Chito Lover, but we gotta assess the situation. If ours desk creaked under the weight of the folder, a stack of reports and predictions standing a foot in height, bound together with string. The full development plan for the Industrial Bureau as it first arrived by Benjamin IV, a bloated monstrosity of a design. He had held a two-page summary in his hoof, a vague attempt to sum up five years of errors, misjudgments, and terrible decisions. It was badly designed at best, utterly useless at worst. It talked of providing hoof tools for farmers instead of tractors the best would encourage localized weaponsmiths instead of centralizing production of factories. How to improve upon existing construction instead of experimenting with completely new engineering approaches. It was also rather derogatory, assuming most of the native Indians lived in mud huts in the jungle and survived on subsistence farming with little understanding of land ownership. It talked of seizing farmland to grow spices without payment for the land. This report was 3,000 pages of outdated, meaningless administrative drivel. He sighed, letting this summary fall back to his desk. He'd known Benjamin IV better than most, had the most insight to the various departments that had worked on the Bureau and through the political connections he could get access to the minutes or minutes of every meeting that had discussed this. His conclusion, scrap the whole thing and start again. Try to salvage his glorified kindling would only waste no, only waste more time than they could afford. Chittal needed to be modernized now, not in 20 years, and it needed to be done without starting a civil war by angering their own deer. Looks like the old Yarl did not exactly finish his reforms. And we'll establish a scientific branch, and we'll talk about some comments as well. The Industrial Bureau's efforts to modernize our nation cannot be only be limited to factories and labor reform. Our nation is also far beyond the rest of the world in terms of science, and it's time for us to catch up. Opening a scientific wing within the Bureau will be the first step on this path. Nice. National standards. Very nice. 1007, of course. Nothing we can do here yet, which is not good. My god, we're so limited. I never knew how limited we really were. Um... Because there's not much we can really do until we get this one done. Oh goodness. Uh, I guess go with maybe the police. Um, yeah. So we got some comments such as, hmm, yes, a question of war lore uh, as the earldom of uh, Chittle. Someone says reformer sounds like a good option. Also, can you start a campaign, a Greece campaign, in Thousand Week Reich? Uh, someone says, why does Ivar look like he knows something? Here's Benjamin, of course. But Ivar, Eva, Benjamin, Jakob, Ivar. He knows something. He definitely does. Um, and someone says, uh, reformist and traditionalist sounds interesting. So we'll see where we end up. Support for the council. Through these times, increasingly seem like critical ones in Chito's history. And all factions wish to make a move. With pressure from the entirety of the council, the Yarl will be adding a consultant or consultant to support the government, governmental body. Whichever faction is able to fill the role will become far more powerful in matters of governance, of course. Access policy, reshuffling, eh? Concessions for loyalty. Oh, that's a lot of access of chittal. Gain influence, lose tension. Corrections in the south, gain tension, lose influence. Okay, let's see what happens with this stuff, but at the same time, hmm. Favor the pragmatists. Hmm. Not much there. Benjamin, Jakob. Reformists. Traditionalists. Oh, that's not bad. I mean, weekly pony power is pretty good to get. Where are we going to go with this one? We lose political power for 20% 20, 20 political power for 25 days. Benjamin. I kind of like it that he's smoking. Look, look, look on that one. See what that's like. The Royal Progress. It's time for the Yarl to take his trip to the south. He'll meet it with supporters and dissidents alike to try and firm up his rule. Let's hope he knows what he's doing. Meeting the Olenno Indians. Alright, well, we'll see. Lose influence, more tension. Eh, we'll see what happens. Why not? Finally, that is done. My goodness, that is so not good for us. Oh, God, this whole research thing is not good. Oh, man. Let's see what we get here now. Eh, we'll go with Benjamin. Adjusting the balance. Tell me, Andreas, how was your first day uh, advising the council? Benjamin passed a minotaur glass of whiskey before sitting, settling himself into his own chair after a long and rather dull meeting with which had mostly been used by the various other council members to try and sweet talk Andreas. He just wanted a moment's peace. With a motion to add a dedicated advisor to support one of the council members that had been proposed, they all thought <clears throat> Benjamin was mad to offer the position to Andreas. The minotaur was a general, not a politician, but that was exactly why he'd been picked. He had no prior allegiances to any of the little cliques and factions within the council, being overlooked and thought of as unimportant, making him impartial. Uh, to top that off, a lifetime in the army taught him the old bull, the ins and outs of administration, as well as navigating the political currents. The army was not immune to the cliques themselves, after all. 
It just is a battle of a different sort, isn't it? The Minotaur responded, even before my appointment was made general knowledge, I'd rather I'd receive dinner and advice from Ivar. Take it to Gala with Ava. Drinks in the officer's mess with Jakob and a promise of some weapons factory tours with Dar Davartanen. They're all playing their own games, trying to pull me out to their sides. It's been getting so bad recently, I was considering calling in a few artillery strikes just to make a point. The only one who hasn't been trying to give me a favor is you, Benjin, which is interesting in and of itself. Are you trying or are waiting for your moment to strike? A glass of whiskey in a comfortable office, maybe? He gestured to the room around them as he sipped his drink. Let's be frank, Benjamin. What's your angle? What do you want to get out of this? Balance, Andreas. I get balance on the council and all the backroom deals. All I ask is that you help me in this. I tip the scales a bit. And who would want you to have... And who would you have me support? He has out his glass for a refill. Uh, Benjamin smiled and lifted the whiskey. Well, I was thinking... Pop my back. Why not take up Dar the Vertan on his offer? I'll spend some time with Jacob. The Gallo of Ava sounds interesting. Ivar's dinner bite was certainly a start. Ooh. Yeah, what if we, what if we are going, Benjamin? You know, maybe we, we, we go this way. Breach loader rifles. Good God, that's not great. 30%, 35%. it. Davir Tannen's presentation. They all emerged from his bedroom, blinking the sleep from his eyes, wrapping a dressing gown around himself haphazardly. He yawned as he regarded Darvid Tannen. It's 3 a.m. Couldn't this wait till morning? He asked, annoyance and is clear in his voice. No, I'm afraid not, Jarl. Darvid Tannen quickly glanced around the corridor to make sure they were alone. The hotel had been vetted before they'd arrived, but one could never be sure who was listening. You need to see this. He booted the fob from his saddlebag and passed it to Benjen. Daniel Shah, the kindest killer elves. They were all being financed and supplied by Hero. Benjamin snapped awake. You, you can't be serious. Now, wide awake. He grabbed hold of the file, pausing only briefly to close the bedroom door and avoid waking Rusu, starting frantically, flicking through the documents and pictures contained within. Examples of guns registered as destroyed being found in a certain arms dumps. Transfers of funds routed through shadow accounts that trace back to Hiro. It was all there before him. I, you, but this is insane. Hiro is, is the shadow of Chitol? Why would she do this? Why would she try to topple the government, the nation? She can't be so mad as to burn the whole thing down. And rise from the ashes to, to take the top spot, no doubt. I don't know what game she's playing, but we've caught the light, glinting off her scale as she slithers. Benjamin's expression quickly turned from his shock to steadfast determination. We've got to do something about this. We just can't allow this to go unanswered. Get Ava on the phone and tell her to pull all funding from Hayra's department, then get Jakob to cut her military clearance and make sure all the factory owners know that she's been up to and don't supply her with anything that she that hasn't first been approved by you and me. We're going to cut the head off the snake here and now. Right away, Jarl. Darvid Tana quickly walked back down the corridor. We're on to you, Madam Hera. Meeting the Oleno Indians. As the train moved up toward, along towards the great southern city of Gondirana, the cabin was alive with sounds and activity. After leaving Oskrandi, the royal progress, including the Jarl, and much of the council stopped at various stations along the route to the southern city, picking up passengers on the way, meeting them. And Dahir was even a crowd of Oleno Indian officials and notables excited to see and meet and speak with the Jarl. So as you can see, my Jarl, by increasing cooperation between Askranbi merchant organizations and southern spice farm owners, we are sure we can increase the economic output of the south by margins unheard of in recent years. Benji nodded along silently to one of the Oleno Hindian representatives, genuinely interested in the nitty-gritty of economic reform and administration. Beside him was Darvitanim, also nodding along. Turning his eye to the seat across the car, he saw Yakum, asleep and drooling, entirely bored by all that's happening. Shaking his head, Darvitanim looked around at the rest of the cabin. Not much else was happening. The delegates winning and whining and dining with members of the Jarl's court. No one knew what was going on. This tour was more important than any of them, and they sat drinking and eating. Benjamin stood up, startling Darvartanen, who assumed must have dozed off at some point. Well, thank you, sir. I'm delighted we could meet, and I love your ideas and plans. Benjamin glanced down at Darvartanen, meeting his gaze for a second before turning back to the delicate he continued. I hope we can meet in Oskranbi soon, and we can put these plans into action. Come, let's go get something to eat. Across the country, in a quiet office, Sierra lifted a telephone and after a few moments was greeted by Bouchon's voice on the other end. What is it, madame? It's time. The wheels of fate begin to turn. Oh, boy. So we have the democracy. I guess we try it. Why not? I guess we are going to go that route for now. Ooh, 32%, 29%. Yeah, no, I feel like we're, we're going to play this campaign a whole bunch of times anyway, so. Meeting the Southern Lords. Bowing his head. Uh, Benjamin remained as still as he could. Ava had advised him that if the flowers got caught in his antlers, it would be taken as a grave insult. Fortunately, however, they passed over his antlers and landed gently around his neck without incident. He smiled and raised his head to the noble doe, who bowed in return and stepped away from him. Ava gave him a warm smile. Everything was going smoothly. The gardens were immaculately present presented, with the able spread and food and drinks dotted between the flower beds. Deer were dressed in their notable fire finery, and the mood was better than he feared it would be. The minor lords and ladies of Gondirana had come out in force. The southern lords were mostly Hindi and none and too fond of Benjamin, but Ava had assured him over and over that as long as he gave no insult and respect to them, the local nobility would do likewise. 
They did not hate him, just mistrusted him. This scope to build a better relationship, and that, that was the first step in developing the region which had historically been ignored and neglected. Well done, Jarl. You were quite dignified and graceful, if I may say so, Ava said, coming to stand on his left side. Yeah, it's just nice to see things going smoothly. Why wouldn't it? These years aren't your enemies, they've just been forgotten about until now. It tends to make one a bit of a prickly well, make one a bit prickly. But just remember what I taught you and you'll be fine. Poise and grace and all things, you're all we're weave the lunch, then the fire dancing, followed by meeting with some teachers and students who should make for a busy afternoon. Indeed. Strange, yeah, I'm actually looking forward to it. He took a deep, uh, relaxed breath of the even evening air, saving the scent of the flowers in the garden. I quite like it here, to be honest. I don't know why I don't spend more time in this part of the country. Well, I'm certain, no, certain some doe could show you around some time. She winked at him. Uh, Lady Indira might have a word. Ava left his side with a silent smirk off to a mingle. Surely it couldn't be this easy. Are they holding back? They probably are. Probably are. Look at all that pee pee. Ah. Hira, ah. Horse board course. Refinery construction speed, that's interesting. Vehicle power cost. Colonnar's protege. That actually wouldn't be bad. It's not bad either. On under sneer. You lose quite a bit of political power for that one. The McCollin sharpshooter. Oh boy. Um, who else do we have here? Mass assault expert. I wouldn't mind that one, but still. Ooh, that's pretty tempting. Yeah, let's go with partial mobilization at the very least. Um, that was almost too easy. The route had been uh, published in the paper, and every deer from Oskran Birkon Dirana knew where the Jarl was going to be. Publicized as a public event, a celebration, anyone in Chital was welcome to attend. There were no worries of any kind, at least among Benjamin's entourage. The Jarl had met the workers of the local factory earlier this morning before heading into the city proper to meet the mayor. As guard had taken the main road south before turning on to Donka Avenue, crowds were lining the route, all excited to see Benjamin on his way through. Jakob personally accompanied him, and both the royal guard and the city police were nearly nearby just in case. It was a nice day, the sun shining, and Benjamin able to enjoy himself in his country. Jakob still looked as grumbly as ever as he sat next to the girl in the car, but Benjamin could tell the older soldier was enjoying the weather, and perhaps even just a bit of the crowd's appreciation. On rooftop overlooking the route, a harpy sat eating a sandwich. To his left was a small radio tuned to a dead frequency. On his right, a carabiner Krayl 06, the finest mid-range rifle on the market. A simple weapon for a simple job. As he finished his lunch, the motorcade made his way slowly down the avenue towards his vantage point. He had his instructions, half the bits for the work, and as usual, an indifferent nature to the situation. With a sigh, he lifted the rifle and placed it upon the ledge of the roof, humming to himself as he gave the scope a small twist, adjusting the range and compensating for the angle. A pity, really. This one will all be too easy, no challenge in it at all. He looked down the scope and saw the car approaching a clear shot. The Jarl was oblivious to his presence, too busy waving a hoop at the scores of deer that gave their adoration, too busy to notice anything else. Here's Benjamin V, last of his name. Your death will free you from the burdens of the government you've always hated, the Macawan mumbled. His claw tightened on the trigger, the clock struck three, and the stroke of fate. The bells ringing from the clock caught Benjamin's attention, as he focused on the straight and narrow head of him for a second. Jakob was too busy staring into the crowds with his gruff expression. The guards were focused on him and the people on the streets, not the buildings themselves. It was why only he saw the gleam from the top of the building, the sunlight reflecting off and momentarily blinding him. Get down, he said, instinctively pushing Jakob out of the way. The crack of gunfire sounded in the street, causing the crowds of deer to scream and run. The guards came running over to defend the Jarl, and Jakob himself instantly snapped to attention. What are you doing? He noticed a pool of blood forming from Benjamin's right front right shoulder. Gods, Benjamin, are you alright? I'm fine, Uncle, the Jarl said, wincing from the pain. Get the shooter, I'll be fine. Jakob turned his attention to the building the shot had come from, where the sharpshooter was still in sight. Guards, he roared, get the assassin. As he and the other deer raced off to catch a retreating figure, Benjamin himself rose from the seat and set his eyes upon the crowds who had stopped fleeing for a moment. Dear Chittal, he said, as loud and strong as he all could muster, a mere assassination attempt by our enemies is not enough to bring me or our nation down. Let us be a lesson and show a, 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 to all against the future will not fall to any strike against us. Jakob would be proud if he was here. Benjamin reflected as the crowd once again began to cheer for the Jarl this time even louder than before. Thank the gods, he's alright. Nice. Axis of Chito sounds like fun. So, we have no focus yet. Wow. A safe return home. The royal train pulled into the Oskranby station to the cheers of crowds gathered around the tracks and platform, hissing to a stop with a great gout of steam. News of the royal progress had been mostly positive while he was away, but this was not what Benjamin had expected to return to. A few interested bystanders, sure, an odd board official certainly, but this? This was something entirely different. Uh, Jakob and Ava both remained inside of the train car, the former under the guise of organizing the Jarl's protection and the latter for her own reasons. They both knew the mo whose moment it was, especially after the attack. The heavy bandages across Benjamin's shoulder was a stark reminder of that. Taking a breath to steady himself and make sure the top button of his uniform was fashioned, Benjamin left the window and made his way down the carriage. As he stepped out into the light, the crowd erupted into cheers, all welcoming him as a hero of Chittal. He flinched just a little as the noise hit him before smiling and waving, doing his best to look comfortable, and only failing or falling, failing somewhat. 
my fellow deer, he called, trying to be heard of the crowd. My fellow deer gradually quiet fell as they became silent to allow them to address them. It warms my heart to no end to return to such a welcome. You've heard no doubt of my travels throughout the length and breadth of our country, as well as the tragedy that occurred recently. I've seen a great many wonders and sadly a great many injustices. I've heard and heeded the advice of lords, doctors, teachers, and construction workers. I've stood in the shadows of our monuments to the past and seen the light of the future to come. And above all, I've stood tall even as the attacks on my life sought to bring Chittle to its knees. We draw a motion for our Darver Tana to come and stand by his side. The advisor blinked before getting cautiously stepped down from the carriage into the small space cleared by the guards. He smiled as he looked around regarding this crowd as though they were friends welcome to welcome them all home before approaching Benjamin. You, all of you, have made this possible. The year I'll continue to the crowd. And it's for all of you that I shall use what I have learned to build a new chittel, a better chittel, a stronger chittel. With my close advisor and clo good friend, Benjamin Darver Tanen, we, we shall give all we have to reform chittel for a new modern age of harmony together. A new dawn shall come to India. While with the Jarl's support behind him, Benjamin Darver Tanen has triumphed in court to the terror of the Axis. Now with new future Benjamin's vision, a true harmony shall commence. Whoa. Dissenting. Neutral, in power. Neutral, neutral. Any unity that the Council of Seven claim to have now has completely collapsed within the aftermath of Benjamin the Fifth's royal progress with Holdersholm's relationship. Uh, with his access compatriots strain and the monarch is even more fractured, it seems Chittal is in a period of political turmoil. We get political power bonus for each support of marginalized or eliminated politician and stability analysis for each descending politician. Oh crap. Indian Wars, eh? Cool, at least we got some trees. The two Benjins. With the aid of Benjin Darbertanen and the progress factions among the people of Chittal, Yarl Benjin V has asserted himself as a leader worthy of the title of heir to the Sea Kings, but he should not rule as he did with fire and sword. Instead, he shall rule the honor of the Olenian deer, upholding liberty, justice, and loyalty. Long live Chief Minister Darbertanen. Strength of the six become marginalized. Well, it sounds, sounds like fun. Rejecting tradition. Jakob the Grey, although a strong, competent warrior and a personal friend of the Jarl and Linen dynasty, should no longer hold influence over Chittal's politics. Let's return permanently to the armed forces and remove the positions in high society that him and his conservative and traditional cronies have held for generations. A southern strategy? Ah. There's this one. Or. What that one? Ooh, political power gain goes up. Uh, Wasil Khanli, a flamboyant socialist and an aristocrat and a prominent supporter of the South and its native Indians, has offered his support for government's efforts to reach full employment in the South of Chittal. Although we cannot be truly sure of his intentions, there is no doubt that it is able to prove vital improving, improving our industrial base. Which would be really good. The level one railway, political advisor, lose stability, get more research speed and factory output. Overall, not bad. Four steps to democracy, huh? Well, yeah, we'll see. A heart to heart. Uncle, you already know why I'm here. The old dear sat in his chair in the royal palace in Oskranby, already having been a long day of both politics and military meetings. Don't you have something better to do, he asked, his voice gruff as usual. You still haven't fully recovered from that assassination attempt. Benjamin sighed internally, filling him two glasses of brandy and giving one to Jakob before taking his own seat. I know you care a lot about me, uncle, and I know that you only want what's best for Chitto, but we're taking a new path now. One from the free, from the old strife between dear kind. The council needs new faces, and you are needed elsewhere now. Jakob only raised an eyebrow as he all continue. You have served the nation honorably for many years, advising both father and Otto, but the military needs you more now than ever. Chitul's troubles are not over, and our soldiers need you at their side, not in the palace, arguing about politics. The only sound seconds slowly, ticking by from a clock as the two Kudlinens stared at each other. The elder was first to speak, I thought this day might come, he said, it's unusually soft, you're not only my you're not my brother, nor yours nephew, and it's clear that you're standing on your own two, four hooves now, regardless of tradition. It's time for me to step aside and let you rule. Thank you, Uncle. Now don't get sappy on me again, the dear replied, his old rough manner back again instantly. It took you long enough to realize that you can still take time off for family. Jacob, or Jacob, took a sip of brandy and gave a satisfied grunt. Olinian, you've been paying more attention than I thought. Benjamin smiled softly. I still do listen to, your, to you sometimes, Uncle. Thank you for your service. Strengthen the six. Uh, let's disband the Axis first. The Axis of Chittles have been continuing to sabotage the administration ever since they banded together as official opposition on the Council of Seven. It's time to formally disband the Axis as a legitimate opposition and scatter their leaders back to where they belong, out of politics. Uh, it's not bad. Leadership or long long ships into traders. The lure of manufacturing would be good. But urging the education gap. Oh, that'd be really good to do too. 
While the northern cities began to develop an educated middle class, it cannot be the same for the south. Efforts must be made to ensure that every region receives funding for basic education so that we can all move to the future together. One should not be left behind because of where they live in Chittal. Pretty much, man. Pretty much. I don't want trucks. Failed revolution, huh? Um... Hmm. Yeah, well, that's probably a bad idea. Oh, jump to a socialite. Oh, yeah, seems alright. Kind of just, it's not very much political power, though. Uh, oh man, what do I want? What do we want? I want more stability. That's what, that's what I want. Political actions? Here, do that one. The power of the Jarl and the reform of Sekiro is only a matter of time before the axis of Chittal. The forces against Benjamin's rule for so long was to be removed officially. It was an exact date when that happened, when their seats were dismissed from the council and the capital. In reality, things were far different. Hiran and Bouchon had already long fled the quarters in Oskrambi with little evidence where they were ever, ever, even there. The Tuli of Bouchon's loyalists were nowhere to be seen, their temples empty before the royal officers even stormed the doors. It was certain that, at least in the north of Chittal, the influence of the axis was gone. However, Shumhaber faced a far different fate. Due to his reformist economic ideas and his royalist past, Jarl Benjamin V personally offered a place in the government to him, a new position now that the Axis was defunct. Ivar, of course, quickly accepted, once again regaining his former place in the inner circle of the Jarl. Overall, it could be seen as a success, and yet some of them among the reformist ranks still spoke in hushed whispers of the danger of a plot moving to the south of Chittal. Perhaps the schemes of the Axis were not over yet. Perhaps the danger was just beginning. Welcome home, Hofersholm, and good riddance to the rest. Strengthen the Six. Although they have been denied a voice in the council, of seven for years, the Jarl's personal faction and core, known to the nobility as the Council of Six, has aided in the investment of his progressive agenda throughout his reign. Now that the Jarl has firmly consolidated control over Chittal, it's time to reward them uh, with the respect they deserve. Long ships into traitors. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our history of Viking God is long and full of great tales of glory, but with raiding international shipping being generally frowned upon in the modern age, our diplomacy requires a new strategy. Longships once used would be excellent trade ships as well, bringing back spoils for the nation in a different, less controversial way. The rush of excavation. Chittal's rich in its resources, like minerals and rubber, currently unexploited due to recent civil strife and instability. The possible economic boons from these resources is immense, and we should focus on the construction of necessary infrastructure to make use of them. And best in industry. Despite being one of the more developed states in India, Chittal remains rather backwater or backwards compared to the rest of the world and its industry and wide scale production. Government investment in certain regions of the country, as well as encouragement of in new industrial factories, should help us in closing the gap and making a more competitive economy on the world stage. Destroying our pride. Ooh. When our Linian ancestors arrived on this continent, they did so in command of the greatest fleet of their time. Now the pitiful state of our fleet leaves the spirits of our forefathers displeased, and a future as a serious power. On doubt, we must dedicate resources towards reinvigorating our naval heritage. Um, the fate of the army. Well, let's get this one first. And construction. Get more stability. Fate of the Jarl's army. Backward and destitute, orthodox and proven. These arguments linger like a plague in the halls of our military schools and in the debates between our staff officers and the new and old guards. She tell the staff officers are torn on how the future of our army should fight. But between the two camps, there's a unanimous agreement uh, or consensus. Our disorganized army must undergo radical changes if we're to survive the coming storm. A progressive administration. The table is an extravagant thing, a circle of mutual respect and equality made of the finest mahogany. It was an idea taken from abroad, and the simplest way to understand it was that by seating all involved in the circle, none of the head, none were the head of the table. All were equal, sound of progressivism borrowed from Equestria. What happens that hard, though? And Benjamin's chair was clearly more ornate than the others. It had been a simple accidental gesture by the staff. Why, after all, would not would one not want to have the head of the government in a position of special respect? Despite his comfortable <clears throat> seating arrangement, unfortunately there were still many issues aloof. Or a hoof. To Benjamin's left had been Darvid Tannen, who had been taking sample, ample opportunity to speak on the potentials of industrialization. To his right, Ava had jockeyed with Ivar for his attention, and both had been outspoken trying to sway Benjamin's hoof, on which policy should come first. Kat Katrina Hoversholm, Ivar's sister and one of the newcomers to the council, seemed to be taking more time discussing something with a similar outsider, Raeli Nynesen, across from him. Benjamin sighed quietly and sipped at the glass before him. Olenian just as he liked, and it slowed his nerves slightly while those at his side desperately demanded his attention in any way but just saying it. Eventually, the din was settled by a book slamming outside or opposite Benjamin in the circle, and he shot up in surprise as Aureli Ninsen 
Barked out a word he didn't catch before speaking further. We're wasting our time. Equestrians already proved the road for us. Why are we insisting on digging it up and remaking it? Rayleigh demanded. For a brief mo for a moment of brief, thankful silence passed before the whole room erupted in uproar and Benjamin lost his scattered arguments once more as they blended into the white noise. With another sigh, he reached for his glass. Perhaps some ideas were not so uh, readily emulated. At least it was a nice chair. And then a great harmonic transition. Many obstacles have been removed from the previously blocked uh, that previously blocked our reformist agenda, yet our transition to harmony will not be easy, uh, nor will it be unopposed. To ensure that the process is not impeded by the misguided native or traditional policies, the Yarl will formally dissolve the Council of Seven and restore all legislative and executive powers in himself until the progressive agenda can be fulfilled. Out with the Council, in with Benjamin. They will not be happy with these authoritarian measures. Hey man, things happen, bro. Um, stability, power, plus power bonus. Dissenting, dissenting, marginalized. Nice, we should do additional as officers, of course. The Chitali army is at a breaking point. Despite the most dangerous politics being behind us now as a nation, the military continues to suffer from the same division that the government did, leaving our armed forces paralyzed. Jacob, the uncle of Yarl Benjamin V, has long been an important voice in the tactics, reforms, and leadership, but opposing him are many Hindians and reformers who would like to see fresh blood in the high ranks of the Chitali army. On one side, the traditionalists have held the army for generations now. They consist mainly of Olenians, with a few native Hindians in the ranks, such as Jacob's trusted subordinate, Pencha Rashanta, Rashanna. Jakob personally advocates for mass motorization and transi transition to the modern tank brigade seen abroad, while others remain steadfast in the old style of intense planning and metho methodological, uh, methodological warfare. On the other side, the growing opposition wing to the army is primarily unified in opposition to the traditionalists, but takes many different directions politically. <clears throat> Generally, they rely on more native tactics and Hindian style uh, warfare, far from the Alinian methods of old. Uh, there were many talented generals that could rise if given the chance, yet doing so would require a, th a thorough purge of the existing Jacobites. Uh, either way, the army requires a complete reorganization, which we can only provide. The old guard has served us well for many years, and will continue to do so. Well, we'll see about that. Bring modernization south. That's not bad. Purge noble corruption. Sweep aside godly. First of democracy. Purge. I kind of like that, but... Bring modernization south. <clears throat> The North has seen real progress and transformation of the standards of modern society, with the expanse of the South and the native Indians being left behind in almost primitive conditions. It is our country to stand strong as a whole. We must ensure that all are included in our economic development, as in there's no better time than to start than now. Purge noble corruption. Initially, the setbacks of modernization were chalked up to bureaucratic errors or local pushback in uncooperative reg regions. However, the truth is slowly revealing itself following the fall of Madame Hira. It is not misguided mistakes, but widespread corruption by nobles keeping Chito back. They must be removed immediately. Which makes perfect sense. Cool. Oh god, 380 still is really not good. And then, oh god, the political power is not very good either. Jesus. Oh man. <coughs> well, at least his industrial bureau is going a little better than it was before. Um, concealment. It's not bad. Air safety is not bad either. Um, yeah, I don't mind maybe going enemy air support. Well, air accidents, armor. We might use armor, I don't know. This is just not worth it. We don't have special forces either, so I don't see the point of doing this one too. So, um, but what if the enemy doesn't have air support, you know? What if we have air support? So then what's the point? Here, we can't do this one. Um, Benjamin the Fifth is in power. More speed's not bad. Offense, I do like that, but I want more army XP than that. And I'll go with you. Purge, noble corruption. Yes, please. And out with the council, in with Benjamin. When the progress of progressive agenda began, many expected a gradual transition into the harmonic and equestrious values, with the government and Yarl working in tandem to pass reforms for a timely yet balanced manner. What they did not expect, however, was for Benjamin V to announce the complete dissolution of the Council of Seven, centralizing all political and legislative power completely under the Yarl for the duration of what was referred to as officially as a harmonic transition period. While they regard as a massive authoritarian move, it is clear that this is meant to ensure no more obstruction to the reforms can be taken under in Chittal. The reception of this announcement was extremely mixed. For many reasons, discontent has risen dramatically in both the Far East and South of the nation. The former due to the traditional supposing the reformers' vengeance to securing full and complete power, um, and latter due to the, rep the representation in the North and the capital being wiped out in a single move. Despite all that, the bastions of reformism, such as the Northern Heartlands and Yost Kranby itself, has been seeing large continued support for the Jarl, giving large draws to Remini's new equestrian order. Chitta remains divided, yet it remains to be seen what will happen now. A new path has been opened. Alright, not bad so far. And 
Still 0.47. That's better than what we had earlier, so. Can't complain too much. Just enough, though. Just enough. Um, unbearably slow and unfathomably steady. A revolution. Become supportive. Or remain in power. Sweep aside the gaudy. The gaudy, another piece of the Olenian religion of that have existed since the formation of Chittal, not only. Uh, come on. Uh, serve as an, an impediment to our future as a secular and fair society. The unjust privileges that they have enjoyed for so long must be torn down so that deer of all faiths, whether they be Olenian or Hindian, can come together as one. Four steps to democracy. Democracy is not something that comes instantly, but instead takes time to truly achieve. If we are to do so, we must remain united. Concrete, have a concrete vision on how to proceed. Our own Rayleigh Nynesson has come up with four points, or pillars, as she calls them, which will make up the foundation of her newfound efforts, which is pretty good. I'm also trying to get, like, uh, all these done. I'm going to do a couple more of these books off screen, because I've read through so many of them. Quest for Skilled Workers. Ooh. Magic research, research, race, magic research speed. Uh, decadence and traditionalism. So how bad is it, really? Benjamin Darver, Tan, and Grimmest. Uh, it's clearly not at the prospect of answering the question, much worse than we had thought. The nobility in almost all cases are, are underqualified and uneducated, and have been running economic development across Chitra for years now. Almost every estate and plantation I visited suffered from some glaring issues, some were well-intentioned attempts that fell from incompetence, and others, well, the less said about them, but the better. And many prefer to live their decadent lifestyles using embezzled funds and actually use them for the intended purposes. They are all frowned, and how long has this been happening? Since the very beginning, remember that industrialization project in Vatalan, the one with new arms factories? Benjamin blinked, trying to rack his memory for a moment. Yes, I believe you said it fell through from the bureaucracy, but that was years ago. And it was, and I did tell you that, because that's what I was told in turn. But in reality, the local nobility had used the money on one of the galas. Val Vertanus slid over a folder flooded with documents and images of the Chitali countryside and cities. We made a good progress in rooting out this already, but there's still plenty of stuff to be done. The traditionals won't let up easily, and we've been blind for, to this for far too long. Both Benjamin's got up, they're all nodding to his trusted advisor. There's, then there's no time to lose. And here it didn't even alert to us to any of this. Shameful. <sighs> At least we got rid of our concealment. Uh, the safety. Ah, screw it. You know what? We'll do that one. We won't do that one next time. We're going to do this campaign again. Um, yeah. And then, oh, tearing down the theocrats. Yeah, there's a lot of reading in this one, which is not bad, but still. I don't mind reading it quite a bit, but government intellectuals. Hunt down the pair. Ooh. That'd be good to do. National Ethos. Secular Chittal. Daily Harmony Support. That's not bad. That's probably pretty good to get, too. All together now. That's good. New Cultural Assimilation. Nice. Endless Bureaucracy. Ooh, that's not bad. Republican Detente. Okay, that's good. No more schemes. No more courts. I like that, too. Um, Ava will become marginalized versus... Ava will become marginalized. Oh, die for the dream. Lessons from Stalingrad. The Great Promise. <clears throat> Excuse me. What is this? The equestrian system? We want to be more like Equestria. Establish the uh, Kungla Riks Dagen system. The most boring deer and chittle. I kind of like that route. Let's go with that one. Unbearably slow and unfathomably steady. Sweep aside the gaudy. Um, the Ural should not sideline the idealists entirely, but the transition to equestrianism should be left within the hooves of moderate reformists. States here who understand the policies made through compromise, not a few beautiful speeches and some big ideas of the advisors bench must embrace. The Great Promise. A new beginning it was called. After the uncertainty of before, a platform was finally announced by the Ural Benjamin V and his court. One to institute the social reforms they had promised for so long. The four pillars were at the center of it all. The great goal that would bring peace to Chittal. Harmony, secularity, justice, and friendship. They would make up the new philosophy that the nation would start to follow to uphold the values at every turn. Some could have likened it to the same principles of Equestria. That was the point. Equestrianism was, after all, the model Benjamin and his advisors looked towards, but the methods publicly released for the future by the court. They were controversial, entirely, overturning the entire religious society of Chittal. Many found themselves asking if Equestrianism was worth the price, but it was certainly too late to turn back now. All they could do now was put their faith in the Jarl and hope for the best. Let's see if Benjamin keeps his word. Ah, Ogabi declared war on the Hayzeb Federation. Cool. Good luck, guys. You're gonna, we're going to need some more manpower. Holy crap. Nice. Um, yeah, I'd like to edit these divisions, but we'll see. I mean, they're not very good. They're only 10 combos. Jesus Christ. 
The best of the best. No personality traits gathered on hiring, huh? Command of Relief. Army Advisor. Oh, I'll do that for that one. Army Speed Gain. Land Auction Cost. Over here, Reserves. Aggressive Reconnaissance. Victory or Death. Static Warfare. Flexible Organization. Overall, that stuff's not bad. Sakura. Nice. Get some more output, because my god, we need it. Oh, almost half a political power day. Hey, progress. Yeah. Sweep side the Gaudi next. That'll be good. The reason of Darvertanen. Let me just say, my year, all that it is my greatest honor to be able to serve as your uh, uh, chief minister. To pick me a all dear to, for the ranks to serve. So you said a thousand times by now, Darvertanen. Benjamin answered, almost giving a sigh. When the reformers had asked for a private talk in the royal gardens, he had hoped there wasn't going to be just for more platitudes. You serve Chittal, um, loyally for my father and brother for decades now. What made you think I wouldn't pick you? The deer tightened in his tie a bit, a, still a bit, a bit nervous. While well, I was worried that you might listen to more of the others instead, like Ivar or Rally. Don't misunderstand me. I know why you brought them in, but Ivar's economics are rather bold, and Rally's stance towards politics is radical. Yeah, exactly. What we need, or rather what I believe we need, is a middle course, a constitutional monarchy with a strong democracy strong democracy to support it. I have heard that Rayleigh and Katrina were speaking to you about emulating the equestrian monarchy. I'm sure their <clears throat> art's in the right place, but we cannot just copy their principality and expect things to work. They are all thought for a moment. He had supposed he had gotten quite caught up in her fiery speeches and literature to really think about what she was suggesting. Uh, questionism had seemed so enlightened and so perfect, yet... Mm -hmm. But Rayleigh had seemed so willing to do whatever it took to reach it. Uh, and Darvertan had seen a lot of his years trying to serve the Jarls. Much older than Benjamin himself, he carried himself with a sort of slow, and re slow reason and determination that was all his own. I suppose you're right, he finally said to his chief minister. And I'm sure you've already planned out everything to get to your democracy, right? Darvertan gave a slight smile. Just leave everything to me, Jarl. Harmony through moderation. Hey, construction speed for civvies? Not bad. Even though it's going to take forever to get there. But, you know, whatever. 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 All weather, Stallion Grid in our town, 0 0.06, 0 0.12. Yeah, I'll probably go with that one. At least start working on it, you know. We don't even have an airbase here, god dang it. That sucks. Alright, sweep beside the Gaudi. Government of Intellectuals. Nationwide hunt shall begin. Hunt down the pair. Falsified reports, inten intentional string of dissent. Um... Covert alliances with the Southern traditionals and socialist revolutionaries, and those are only some of Hero's crimes and spy mysteries. Ariel has been deceived since the moment he first appointed her to the council, but now things might shall be set out right. Our deer will be sent to the hunting them down and eliminate them as threats to Chittal. When the hunt concludes, we will gain the following. Hira and Bouchon, the brash, will be eliminated, because right now, what are we at? Dissenting. Well, it could be a lot worse. Not bad. But yeah, just keep building. And then we'll have to read about tearing down the theocrats. Tensions, huh? Axis of Chito, we gotta get rid of that, and. Yeah. Well, it's not the worst malices I've seen, but you know, it's still good to get rid of that stuff. So, there's only six days left. Uh, industrializing society sucks. Small science base kind of sucks. Limited illiteracy. It's, uh, negligible poverty is good, though. We don't know the race. Tearing down the theocrats. It was horrible. A complete disgrace to the nation. Seval had never seen such an insult to the proud traditions of dear kind. Such a grave mistake by the Jarl Dumb. He knew that the reformers would go too far, but this was ludicrous. When the announcement was first made by Benjamin V, it spread like wildfire throughout the East. Uh, the old, their old privileges, their ancient protections, rooted in the very foundation of the nation itself, gone in an instant. The berserkers of Vikingar, the seers, every group tied with the purpose of Chitta was left with nothing. So Seval was one highly respected deer in the city with his bloodline of Olenian warriors, yet that was falling apart around him. He wasn't the only angry one with this move, either. His friends, his colleagues, and many across the traditional political spectrum were angry and certainly showing it. There were few protests, but it seemed that nothing actually reaching the Jarl himself who remained in close crime be surrounded by his followers and loyalists. Oh, him and his advisor, that Nansen may have talked a big game, speaking of secularism and justice. But it was all excuses to take power for themselves and the native Indians. They might have been happy, but at what cost? There was certainly a better way, but Sibal at least knew that Benjamin had been too blind to see it. Tolerance over tradition and for a secular ch chittle for more daily harmony support. With the Gaudi sideline and the privilege is gone, it's time to finish a process of secularizing our nation. Schooling, public services, land rights, everything must be adjusted to remove this unfair bias we have had for the Lillian faith for too long. Citizens will never again have their lives impeded by religion, and be free to choose their own beliefs. The hunt begins. Hira Ramachan had not been seen at court or in the city of Oskarambi for weeks, and the beginning of the phenomenon was merely a laughing matter. Benjen Darvatanen and Ivar Holvershon 
We we'll joke about the various deviant pleasures or deep revenge schemes Hero could be indulging in, and rarely, Ninison, or good riddance under her breath whenever the topic was mentioned. Three weeks in the loss of Hero, the situation with the spy mistress was not exactly to Benjamin's liking, until Hero finally brought it up in one dull meeting of the council. However, Shom shrugged and suggested she was off in the south somewhere in the commission of new propaganda, and Darbar Tanning declared no one had seen her at any of the industrial sites for months, before breaking out into laughter at the very thought of the petite Aramachan ever visiting a factory. Only an innocent. Ferrell or Brown spoke up with a serious response to claim that Ava sent, sent notes the previous day about disturbing news in the South. Agents of the Chitelli government were found outside, or agents, those agents were found dead outside Harahus. Their warrants for Danya Shah's arrest still on their hooves. Ava, of course, had assumed that it was the Reds, but an innocent. And they all both knew. Uh, Shah no longer had the base to make such bold statements. It had to be, uh, or must have been, Ramachan. With the Ninison and Dervertanen's backing, the primitive automobile set out at dawn to track down the spy mistress and find the last known place that she had reared her vile head in. Ava Pillow's domain of Gondirana would be an excellent place to start. To Gondirana, it is them. As, of course, we, we started shooting the Skyfall. We can only get almost half a political power a day, still. And we're hunting down the pair. Um, getting this one would be pretty nice, but not really needed. We could lower supremacists and other support, but we're still going up regardless. A government of intellectuals. The elite of the country shall be included in building towards a new future. Experts earn their respectable positions for reason after all, and can offer us their wisdom as we move past the old regime. The present system of activists and powerful groups demanding influence throughout leveraging wealth and political connections must go. And reason and decision making will not be what drives us forward. On her tail. The Asians got to Gondiran in a relatively fast time, entering the southern city and immediately getting to work attempting to correct on Hira or Amachan's location. It was, of course, difficult, as the spy mistress was nor notoriously secretive, and the city was the second largest in all Chittal, and the locals were not exactly the most cooperative at times. After a few days, however, the forces on the ground finally reported into the Yarl with a lead. Some deer reported a disturbance next door, and multiple testimonies had lined up with Hira and her agents taking temporary residence. The team reacted with lightning speed, breaking in ready for a fight. However, Hira was already gone. Almost no trace of her presence remained, dust already settling upon the countertops and tables of the many rooms. The spy mistress had sensed the approaching threat and fled, leaving her pursuers with not a clue of where she was heading. Letters to the Yarl reported failure after failure, and the one possible lead that they had, at least for now, was a loss. Always one step ahead. So we do have government intellectuals and bring a modernization south. The North has been seeing some real progress and the transformation to the standards of modern society, but at the expense of the South and the native Indians being left behind in almost primitive conditions. If our country does stand strong as one whole, we must ensure all are included in our economic development. And there's no better time to start than now. Ava's guidance. So we're stuck, Yarel Benjamin put the latest uh, letter deploy. Deployed guard in Oskranby, sitting at the table of the council. Gondirano was a dead end, and heroes nowhere to be found. We cannot let such a threat to Chitok get away, but heroes keeping one step ahead of us all. We need more leads and fast. The sixth deer at the table thought for a few moments. Well, don't look at me, Darvartanen finally replied. I've informed the factories to keep an eye out, but I doubt Hero would be foolish enough to try and enter one for some reason. I know. Ava spoke up, grabbing every deer's attention. My contacts in the south have told me that they've seen the spy mistress at her estate in Harahus. If you send your forces there, you may be able to catch her. Benjamin nodded, while Rayleigh seemed less convinced. And why would she be there? The orator questioned. That would be one of the first places to look. She wouldn't be in a place so obvious as that. Here's more likely to try and flee across the board, cutting her off at Mahorna. It is a better plan. Ava seemed rather offended at the insinu insinuation of being called a liar, but the notion was enough to give the R a pause. She did raise a good point, and Ava was known for her previous acts of sympathies. But at the same time, she had proven to be, uh, to be a reliable ally in court. Her choice had to be made, and decisively, no matter where she was now, the spy mistress was unlikely to remain there for long. To her state where Ava had lied? Um, I imagine it was that person. Ava is neutral. Um, mm. Could a hard us? Maybe if it's wrong, then we're wrong, and we'll maybe make sure we're not wrong. But you know, whatever. Yeah. Shattering agricultural monopolies. For too long, the agrarian economy of the South has been controlled by the few no elite nobles who exploit the monopolies for financial gain and stifle innovation in their respective regions. Many deer have uh, suffered from a result of their almost total control over the market, but no longer will this be the case. The monopolies must end and the land split up in a more equitable manner. Upon receiving the orders from Oskrambi, dispatch forces quickly made their way to a convergent Harahus, ensuring that Hero would not be able to escape this time. Her state, after all, was public knowledge, and getting in would be at fool's play. It was simply a matter of finding her, arresting her, and hopefully her crony Bouchon while they were at it. The strike was coordinated, well prepared, and done with precision. It also happened to be completely fruitless. The state was, much like the safe out in Gondiran, completely empty. Upon closer inspection, it was obvious that no deer had been there for some time. 
It wasn't a case of barely missing here again, it was getting the location completely wrong. The lady was false, the trail completely cold, who knew where the spy mistress was. The news was quickly sent to Benjamin, who was not happy in the slightest. Angry both at Ava for lying and covering for the axis, and himself for not listening to Ninsen. He would tell the guard to keep looking, of course, but the chances of catching Hero before she skipped to wherever she was heading was some to none now. Darn you, Ava! To the festival! Mahorna, at least normally, was a city once a fairly hostile to the Jarl. After all, it was the homeland of the Bushan, who few did not know of his opposition to the Olenian elite domination over the native Indians. However, luck came in the form of an excuse to enter. A large festival was going on, in celebration of some local holiday. Many of from the region were coming to attend, and it would be easy to slip unnoticed by the crowd. What's the situation? A soldier looked up to see an officer standing next to him expectantly. Or expectantly. Our forces are in position, sir. He responded with the salute. The city is on official, unofficial lockdown. And we have every exit watch for any sign of the spy mistress on our entourage. Excellent, the officer nodded. Any sign of them? No, sir. We have deer gearing up in plain clothes as we speak to enter the festival and search the Madame Hero. However, uh, it's rather crowded and it may take some time to crack them down if we are within the city. Keep it, or, keep it at private. Or keep at it private. The officer turned away. I will need to inform the Yarl of the, these developments. This better not be a trap. Was it bringing modernization south? Shattering agricultural monopolies, subsidizing southern nationalities. Or nationalizations, I should say, not nationalities. Um, a third way. Oh, that's cool. Endless. Oh, yeah, that'd be kind of nice to do. A government of intellectuals. There is one. Uh, the elite of the country should be included in building towards a new future. Experts earn their respectable positions for a reason, after all, and can offer us their wisdom as we move past the old regime. The present system of activists and powerful groups demanding influence through leveraging wealth and political connections must go. And of course, reason decision making would not be what drives this war. Yeah, I did read that one. Because they do into that one. Republican detente. That'd be nice. So I just gotta wait against what it. India's own SMILE. Here is festival. The festival was nearing its end as Hira sat at one of the many tables set up for the event, rather bored all things considered. If it was up to her, they would be long gone from this village already away across the border and far from the reaches of Oskranbi, but no. Bushan insisted that they remain at least for some important celebration from his homeland, and so here they were, remaining in Mahorna at some glorified party. Well, it wasn't completely bad, though she was sure Bushan would have disproved. One or two stations to gamble had been set up among a few deer. Hira decided to join in, always fancying a bit of a game of chance. Luck was appearing to be on their side, as the winnings nearly nearly doubled since the first she first started. The dice were rolling in her favor, unlike the winds of politics, which had clearly not. At least something was going right. Out of the corner of her eyes, she spotted a new deer coming to the table. He was a young stag, could it be more than 25, with a fair amount of money to bring to the table. Interestingly enough, he seemed to pay more attention to the players than the dice. And there was something so familiar about him too, something that Hira couldn't put on her hoof. Place your bets, the spy mistress snapped back to, back to attention, pushing forward a sizable amount of her winnings towards the next roll. But out of the corner of her eye, she saw the newcomer stare at her, a flash of recognition in her eyes, and that was when it finally hit her. He was a Jarl loyalist. It was already over. Hira could hear the two deer coming up behind her. There wasn't a point in running. Sighing, she sat back and tried to relax at the table, or at least for now, for a few moments. Might as well enjoy the last bet while she had the chance. Can you roll the eight-sided dice, die, please? She'd been caught by our authorities, and they're not far from taking out Bushan Garat. Both have been neutralized. Nice. Eliminated, nice. Political power bonus, 0.15, and we got more stability. <gasps> we almost have one a day. Oh, cheer up, Terra's taking them out. Nice, nice, nice. Hello, Lunar Hail. Because the King of Wars didn't have unique folk street. Oh, God. Oh, they do. That must not be easy to play. I have to play some now, too. Um, let's just start trading. That's fine. We don't mind trading. So... Bring modernizations south. And the Republican detente. Over Shom's fears have been proven false, and neither traditionalist and royalism or nor hardline equestrianism is one on Chittal. With such a seemingly beneficial outcome for him and the Shah now in Chittal, perhaps we can convince him to work with a chief minister or to join a democratic opposition. Anything but open sedition will suffice. An endless bureaucracy. It is not the nobility that is needed to run Chittal. It is the bureaucrats, the endless and faceless deer who make sure that our affairs of state run smoothly from day to day, who deal with the issues that crop up throughout the country. We've been severely lacking in the state of bureaucracy as of late, and a major overhaul and expansion should aid the government in its, in its administration. No more schemers, no more courts. The royal court and its nobility have proven to be of no help to Chittal, and only serves as a place for political schemes and alliances to push personal agendas upon the nation and its people. It shall be cast out and replaced with a new system of bureaucratic advisors directly to the Jarl, who will advise them better than any of the out of touch nobles or socialite could, and India's own SMILE. Hera may have been a traitor and a fascist, but she was also an adept spy. Without her, our ability to conduct intelligence operations is extremely lacking and leaves us vulnerable. A more politically suitable infrastructure must be created and replaced in order to defend democracy instead of assaulting it. And Benjamin's brand of justice, corruption, underhoofed, and influence, and intrigue. This was once a state of Chitali politics for us to gain the trust in the system. Our justice must be fair, clean. Justice must be fair and clean. 
promising, are promoting open and a harmonic discourse instead of the mindless propaganda of the communism supremacists. If the people believe that we are fair, they will be they will believe in our harmony. Uh, which will be good. And then sweet, sweet rubber. We are lucky enough to be in one of the most rubber rich regions in the world, and as military is modernized and more importantly motorized, the precious resource will only go up in demand. Expanding our current facilities and ensuring we benefit the most from this is an opportunity we can afford to pass up. Begin industrial militarization. Churchill must not be left defenseless, and there are many regimes that may wish to see ours fall and our dear enslaved. We must be ready for such a scenario. And focusing our efforts in arms for manufacturing industry, military industry, will give us the edge so that when the enemy comes to some day, uh, we'll be prepared to strike back. And then Chitelli Deer and Chitelli Factories. With the many resources we have available at our disposal, and our economic base which only grows by the day, we found ourselves in a position to become a strong industrial power. If we just put in the end effort, as our own Chitelli marched to work in the newfound employment within the cities, it's in within our sight to one day rival the powers of Griffonia and Anquist. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we might finish out the campaign, or maybe not. But thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.